This is the next part of the Revelation overview. And we've made it to chapter 15. And now we're going to enter the fourth account of the tribulation, chapters 15 through 16. And this will focus on the vials. In chapter 15, you got seven angels that are given the seven last plagues. It says in Revelation 15, 7, And one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials, full of the wrath of God, who liveth forever and ever. So they got seven golden vials full of the wrath of God. And the wrath of God is poured out over the entire tribulation, not just the last three and a half. I mean, remember back in Revelation chapter 6, it was the Lamb Himself showing John the future and showing him his wrath. Now, chapter 16, you got the first vial. And you got a noisome and grievous sore that falls on the men that have the mark of the beast and have worshipped his image. So all these people are going to get this mark. They think they're doing the great thing. They think they're doing the right thing. But then what happens? They get a noisome and grievous sore that falls on all the men that take the mark of the beast. Here In chapter 16, that's the first vial. The second vial... It's poured out on the sea, and it becomes as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul dies in the sea. The third vial is poured out on the rivers and fountains of waters, and they become blood. The fourth vial poured out on the sun, and power is given to the angel to scorch men with fire. Imagine that. You got all this other stuff going on. People walking around with sores on them from the mark of the beast. And then the sun is so hot it's scorching men with fire. Imagine how uncomfortable it's going to be. The waters are turning to blood. You can't get nothing to drink. It's hot. Then you got the fifth vial. It's poured out on the seat of the beast and his kingdom is full of darkness. And on top of that, you got a place full of darkness. You can't see what creepy crawlers are wallowing around in the dark. Then you got the sixth vial, and that's poured out on the great river Euphrates, and it's dried up so that the way of the kings of the east may be prepared, so that they can gather together easier to go against the Lord Jesus Christ and his army. That's a crazy thing. Revelation sixteen thirteen, And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Once again, there's your unholy satanic trinity. Remember in the last one, we focused on the tribulation, looking at that unholy trinity. And it says, For they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth into the kings of the earth and of the whole world, to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Now look at this. This is why I say that chapters 15 through 16 put you through another account of the tribulation. Look at what you got here. You, you had in the sixth vial poured out on the great river Euphrates and it was dried up so that the way of the kings of the east may be prepared and those they could gather together to go against Jesus Christ. When? At the second coming. And then in, in verse 14, what does it say? To gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. That's the battle of Armageddon. You've got it mentioned here again. You see, if you take Revelation chronologically, then you're going to have Jesus coming back four or five times in the book of Revelation. It's not chronological. It's John has given you several accounts, four or five accounts of Jesus Christ coming back. I believe there's five. Most people believe there's four. But notice they work miracles. These spirits of devils work miracles. They're going to deceive with all power and signs and lying wonders. There's going to be strong delusions. And you can already see today, it's getting to where, you know, uh, you, you can't tell what's truth from a lie. You can't tell what's fake from what's real. They got it now where uh, they can take someone's face and on a video and make that face say anything they want it to say. So in the 
in the not distant future, they're going to be able to take your face, maybe a, a popular pastor's face, uh, put him on a video, and make his face look like it's saying whatever they want it to say. And that would deceive people. But notice they work miracles, and they're going to deceive that way. But in Revelation 16, 16 15 through 16, it says, Behold, I come as a thief. There it is talking about the second coming. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked, and they see his shame. Now look at this, verse 16, And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. Now, verse 17, the seventh vial. Revelation 16, 17, And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. So look at that. I, I believe that's very clear that 15 through 16 just took you through a, a whole nother account of the tribulation, focusing on the vials, and at the end of it, it showed you the battle of Armageddon, and even said, it is done. Now, I, th I, I think that's honest Bible study right there. Just going by what it says. That shows you a whole nother account of the tribulation. So the seventh vial shows you the second coming. And the Lord bringing in his kingdom. Yeah, the seventh vial said, it is done. And 16, 18 says, And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since man were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. So there's that earthquake that happens at the second coming. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. So there's Babylon falling. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great hell out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hell, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. Chapter 16 is brutal. So much going on. Just the Lord wrecking havoc on the earth. It's, it's no contest. Man is no contest for the Lord. But now, we are going to enter the fifth account of the tribulation. And I know this may be hard to wrap your mind around because maybe you've never heard it. And maybe you've, you've always just read it and, and thought, well, this is all in chronological order. Just, you don't have to believe what I'm saying. Just read it and with an open mind and judge for yourself, you, you know, using the Bible. Let the Bible be your guide, the Holy Spirit. And see for yourself. Is it more than one account of the tribulation? Or just one account? Or is it two accounts? Some people have four. Most people, or most Bible believers that I know of, have four accounts going through. But now we enter the fifth account. I believe the fifth account of the tribulation, Revelation 17 through 19. And this account will focus on mystery Babylon. And... It's already talked about Babylon falling already. So if it's in chronological order, then you got Babylon falling more than once. So Revelation 17, 1. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, and I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. So once again, you see how Revelation does not seem to be in exact chronological order on how the events will play out in the tribulation. One of the seven angels which had the seven vials is coming to talk to John and is now going to show him something. And specifically going to show him more detail about the great horror mystery Babylon and who we've already heard about and seen fall several times by now, which is the mystery Babylon. And it's just giving more detail. So this is 17 and 18 is going to take you through another account with the focus on Mystery Babylon. So this whore sits on many waters. And we will see that the waters refers to people here soon. 
But it says in Revelation 17, 2, With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. This is spiritual fornication. Mystery Babylon is a religion as well. And Catholics use wine in the mass. And they make people drunk with the wine of their fornication. Now look at this, Revelation 17, 3. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit up on a scarlet colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Notice this again. Notice John is once again being carried away in the spirit to another location in time. So that phrase, in the spirit, once again, we see that it has to do with the Lord transporting John somewhere else. And this time he's carried into the wilderness and sees a woman. There is the great whore on a scarlet colored beast. Scarlet is associated with Rome. When the Roman soldiers stripped Jesus, they put on him a scarlet robe in Matthew 27, 28. And she's riding a beast. This is beauty and the beast right here. Hollywood never had an original thought. Revelation 17, 4. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Once again, purple and scarlet color. In Mark fifteen seventeen, those Roman soldiers are said to have put on the Lord a purple robe, and she's decked with gold, precious stones, and pearls. Nothing but worldly stuff that's just going to be destroyed. Notice also the golden cup in her hand. Look up Catholics and golden cup on Google Images. And you'll see what I'm talking about. They call it a chalice. They use that. They got that golden cup. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Ever heard the saying it was written all over his face? Well, the great whore has a whore's forehead. Her wickedness is, is written all over her face. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. When I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. She kills the saints. And you do know that the Roman Catholic Church killed the saints. I mean, it's in church, read about church history. That she's drunken with the blood of the saints. And it's going to happen again. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest where the horse sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. So she's got a huge influence over millions and millions of people. I don't know if you realize this, but there's a lot more Catholics than there are Bible believers. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree, and give their kingdom unto the beast. And to the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. This woman, the great whore, is a city and a religion. And the Catholic Church has Vatican City. The similarities are... Too much to be a coincidence. Now chapter 18, it shows you the destruction of Babylon and the devastation of that destruction. Revelation 18, 2, And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. This verse shows you that unclean birds are associated with unclean spirits. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. It's all about worldly riches. It's all about wanting more and more, more money, power, and respect on this earth. That's why they'll go along with the beast and the beast system, buying and selling through taking the mark and worshiping the beast. Now, chapter 19. Here's the second coming. This is possibly the greatest chapter on the second coming in all the Bible. Chapter 17 and 18 took you through the fifth account of the tribulation. What do you have in the very next chapter, the second coming? 
Revelation 19, 7 and 8. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. So the bride of Christ has made herself ready at the judgment seat of Christ, and will go into the marriage supper of the Lamb. You'll be clothed in a brand new outfit that will be better than anything that you ever wore down here. If it gets blood on it during Armageddon, don't worry, because anything you get on it will come out without even needing a stain remover. You won't even have to wash it. It'll just dry and clean on its own. Revelation 19, 9, And he saith unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called into the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. Now here is the second coming. Revelation nineteen eleven, And I saw heaven opened. And behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. This is none other than the Lord Jesus, and he's about to start a righteous war and set up a righteous kingdom. His eyes were as a flame of fire. Notice this matches Revelation chapter 1. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Imagine being on this earth, and you look up, and behold... The Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. And this is the real visitors from outer space, as you know they call it. And they're coming to take over. And then you see him, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp two-edged sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress. We're back talking about that again. Remember, we've seen that in Revelation 14, because Revelation isn't chronological. It's giving you more in one account of the tribulation and Satan coming, he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. He's going to stomp the people in his fury and tread the winepress. And it will be like stomping a bunch of grapes and the blood will stain all of his raiment. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun and he cried with a loud voice saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. This matches Matthew 24. Showing you the context of Matthew 24 is the second coming, not the rapture of the church. Here you've got fowls gathering together to eat the carcasses that are being stomped. And in Matthew 24, 27, and 28, For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be, the second coming of the Lord. Now look what it says, For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Matthew 24 right, matches Revelation 19. So which supper are you going to attend? The marriage supper of the Lamb with the saints, or the supper of the great God, where the fowls will get full of your flesh the people left on earth will be for the birds revelation 19 18 through 20 that you might eat the flesh may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men both free and bond both small and great and i saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army and the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image these both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone notice that they are cast alive into a lake of fire the millennium is about to start when this happens and men will be in danger of being cast alive bodily into a lake of fire just like the beast and the false prophet and it says in revelation 19 21 and the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse which sword proceeded out of his mouth and all the fowls were filled with their flesh now look how perfect this is chapter 20 we just seen the second coming in revelation chapter 19 chapter 20 you got the millennium after the second coming jesus christ will set up his millennial kingdom the antichrist and false prophet have been cast into the lake of fire the devil is going to be bound in the bottomless pit for a thousand years the unclean spirit will be made to pass out of the land and the lord's going to sit on the throne 
The Lord has slain all the God-haters. All born-again believers have come back down with Him at the second coming and glorified bodies. And He has a, He has saved the believing, believing remnant of Israel. The Old Testament saints such as Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and David will be there. The people from Gentile nations who helped the brethren will be there. They were the sheep of Matthew 25. You got all diff the different classes and groups uh, of saints are there. And it says in Revelation 20 and verse 1, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. Notice the heart of the earth is a physical place with keys and chains. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. This sh verse shows you that the dragon, the devil, the old serpent, and Satan are all the same evil creature. It also shows you that he is Leviathan. Because if you go back and look at Isaiah 27, 1, it says, In that day the Lord with his sore and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan, the piercing serpent, even Leviathan, that crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. It's all one and the same creature. And the devil is bound a thousand years. Why not forever? Well, because he has to get back out and tempt man one last time. Because there's going to be children born to the people who still have natural bodies in the millennium. And they're going to be given a choice. God or the devil. Satan will present them with a choice. To take sides with him or the Lord. Revelation 20 verse 3 and 4. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more. Till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they sit upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Notice how many times the phrase a thousand years occurs in this chapter. Watch this. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years years were finished this is the first resurrection blessed is holy and he that hath part in the first resurrection on such the second death hath no power but they shall be priests of god and of christ and they shall reign with him a thousand years and when the thousand years are expired satan shall be loosed out of his prison over and over he says a thousand years to show you that there is a thousand year kingdom yet to come and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. So the devil's been bound for a thousand years, but man's flesh is so bad that he's still, the, the, the devil can still muster up an army that's as big as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. But watch this, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. It was no contest. The devil and his army were destroyed just like that. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Notice it said, where the beast and the false prophet are. One thousand years had passed, and they are still there. They never get out. Now for the great white throne judgment. Revelation twenty eleven through 12. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. They aren't judged on whether or not they get to go to heaven or hell, but rather judged on how bad eternity is going to be for them. It's according to their works. Every idle word that men shall speak they will give account thereof in the day of judgment. Revelation 20, 13, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. One day, if you're lost, the Lord is going to pull you up out of hell, and you'll stand in front of Him and face Him about your sin, and you'll be judged, and it will be determined just how hot and tormenting the lake of fire is going to be for you. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. As a general rule, all men die. But you don't have to die the second time. The wages of sin is death. 
And that includes the second death, unless you get saved. So come to Jesus Christ as the guilty sinner that you are and believe on him. Put your trust in him and his shed blood. He died on the cross, shedding his blood. He was buried and resurrected. Revelation 20 and verse 15. Who, whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now, chapter 21. What do you have? The new heaven, new earth, new Jerusalem. Revelation 21, 1 and 2. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Notice once again, John saw. John has seen more in his life than I guess anybody has. He saw it all from the rapture to the new heaven and the new earth. And it says, And I heard a great voice. John heard he sees and he hears. I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. So no more tears. There were tears in the millennium. There were tears at the great white throne judgment, but there would be no tears in the new heaven and the new earth. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. No longer will you have to worry about the devil, about unclean spirits, about God-haters, or anything that defiles. And in chapter 22, you got the chapter about the river of life. In Revelation 22, 1, he showed me... A pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. It goes back to like it was at the beginning with the tree of life. He wouldn't let Adam eat off the tree after he fell because he didn't want him to live forever in a sinful state. But there are going to be some people and natural bodies in the future in the future eternity who do eat off the tree and they will live forever and we don't have to because we already have glorified bodies but it says and there shall be no more curse but the throne of god and of the lamb shall be in it and the, his servants shall serve him no more thorns and thistles no more curse no more bringing forth children in sorrow it will be like it was supposed to be there will be painless childbirth people will continue to have children and populate the lord's kingdom and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. No mark of the beast, no name of the beast in the forehead, just the Lord's name. Revelation 22.20 20, He which testifies these things saith, Be, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus.